Hi there, welcome to episode 09, Creating and Assigning Materials. We already know that a material is no more than a set of properties that define how geometry interacts with light. These material properties tell us the color and texture of the object, how rough or shiny is the object, how transparent is the object, and other additional properties. In case you need to apply map textures in your material, then you will need to specify map coordinates on the geometry. These map coordinates are called UV maps or UV textures. To create a material, you can use the material palette to select material presets, or you can create materials directly in the matte context. Let's practice both ways. Go to the material palette. Here you can see many built-in materials to select from. You can find materials for characters, clothes, glass, industrial, liquids, metals, and other useful presets. But most of the time you are going to work with a principal shader, because this is a generic material that allows us to create a large number of realistic materials. Besides, this is an artist-friendly shader. Select the principal shader and drag it to the right. Now, to edit properties, we need to do it in the material context. Go to the material context. Rename the material as Milk. To assign the material, drag it over the fluid mesh. In this case, the material is assigned at the object level. If we go to the object level and select the splash mesh and go to the Render tab, we can see the material milk has been assigned. Press the Jump to button to return to the material context. Now, for the Raspberry, we are going to create the material directly in this context. Press Tab, go to the Shader menu. Here you can select from different presets. Select the generic principal shader. Rename the material as Raspberry. For the Raspberry, we need more control over how this material is assigned to the Raspberry model. So, we are not going to assign it to the object. Instead, we are going to assign the material inside the object. Go to the object level and dive into the Raspberry object. Now, to assign a material, we need a material node. Press Tab, type MAT and press ENTER twice. But where do we place the material node? Usually, you should place it at the end when the model is finished. However, in this case, the Raspberry is conformed by one droplet copied many times. So, we could assign the material at the end of the left stream, before the Copy to Points node. In the Material node, you can assign a material to the whole geometry or a specific polygonal group. With the Group parameter, you specify the polygonal group, and with the Material parameter, you specify the material for that group. With the number of materials parameter, you can add or subtract new material instances. Let's add one instance. In this new material instance, you can specify the group and the material. Let's remove this instance. For the Raspberry, we need to assign the material to the whole geometry. So, we don't need to specify a group. We only need to specify a material. Press the Choose Operator button and search for the Raspberry material in the MAT context. Change the display flag to the material node. This is our single droplet. Press the spacebar and F to frame the object. Now, how to map texture on the geometry surface? To achieve this, we need two steps to do. First, Specify texture map coordinates in the surface. And second, specify a texture image in the assigned material. To assign map coordinates, we have the UV texture node. Let's add one. Press Tab, type UV text, press Enter twice, and drag the node before the material node. In this node, 
the texture type parameter sets how a texture is projected onto the geometry. For a planar geometry, the orthographic option is the best, while for a spherical object like the duplet, it's better to choose the polar option. But how do we have visual feedback for the parameters we are changing? The UV Quick Shade node comes to the rescue. Press Tab, type UV Quick and press Enter twice. Now connect it to the UV Texture node and change the display flag to the UV Quick Shade node. Change the viewport layout to two views side by side and in the left viewport press spacebar and 5 to display the UV viewport in which we can see a planar representation of the proxy texture to be mapped onto the geometry. In the right viewport we can see how the proxy texture is mapped onto the object. And now you can play with the parameters on the UV texture node and see the result in the viewport. Change the texture type Change it to orthographic, select polar, try cylindrical, finally go back to polar. Now change the scale. For the duplet, let the texture type to polar and the scale to 1. Restore the viewport layout to single view. Return the display flag to the out node. Press the spacebar and F to frame the Raspberry. Just to check if all the duplets have the UV coordinates, place another UV quickshade node at the end. Zoom in to check. We can see all the duplets have UV coordinates, although there are some artifacts. Go back to the UV texture node and enable the Fix Boundary Seams checkbox. It fixes the problem. Return the display flag to the Out node. Now we can see we have some artifacts in the duplets intersections. This is because at the moment the geometry doesn't have normals. To fix this, add a normal node. Let's do it before the material node. Press Tab, type Normal. Press Enter twice and drag the node before the material node. The issue is solved. Go to the object level. Now, to assign a texture to a geometry, it has to be done in the material at the material context. Go to the material context and select the Raspberry material. Go to the Textures tab. Enable the Use Texture checkbox. Use the Chooser button to search for the desired texture to use. Located in the Text folder, select the Raspberry Color image. Go to the Surface tab. If you change some parameters, you can see the effect in the viewport. But this is just a preview. To see the final effect, we need to render the image. Restore the camera view. We have geometry, materials, and lights. Now, to render, we need a render node. To create a render node, go to the out context. Press Tab, type mantra, and press enter twice. Delete the node. Another way to create a render node is using the main menu. Go to the menu and select render, then create render node. Here you can select the generic mantra option or the PBR option, which stands for physical based rendering. Let's use the PBR option. There are a lot of tabs and parameters in this node. As needed, we'll be addressing the most important parameters. Let's rename the mantra node as splash B01. In this node, the first parameter you should set is the path and the file name where to write the output rendered images. You can do this in the output picture parameter. Remember, $OS represents the node name. And as I am using the apprentice version, 
I'm going to use the .pickNC format. Middle click on the output picture to see the final path and file name. Another important parameter in the render node is the camera parameter. Press the operator chooser button to search for the shot A camera. To render the image in the viewport, go to the render view. Check that the output driver is set to splash B01 and the camera to render is set to shot A. It's ok, so press the render button. The render is progressive because the preview button is enabled. If we disable the preview button, Mantra divides the image up into tiles and begins rendering each tile individually. Enable the preview button. In the render view, you can click on any region to give priority to the rendering process. You can also hold Shift and select an area to limit the render process only to this area. To restore the render to the full image, press Shift and left click outside the render area. Ok, I'm going to let the render process finish. It took 1 minute and 47 seconds to render the image. To speed up the render process while testing, we can enable the override camera resolution checkbox and let the default value of one half. Now we are rendering half of the size and it took only 18 seconds to render the image. Once you have a rendered image, you can press on the camera icon in the render view to store the image to the history so that you can change parameters and have a reference to compare to. Let's make some adjustments to the lights. Go to the object context and select the right light. The intensity parameter allows you to change the linear intensity. While the exposure parameter allows you to change the light intensity as a power of 2. It's a matter of preference which one you use. I prefer to use the intensity parameter as a non-off switch and the exposure parameter to adjust the light intensity. Leave the intensity to 1 and the exposure to 5. For the inf light, set the exposure to 6. And for the backlight, set the exposure to 5. Stop the render process. At the moment, we have a black background. Let's quickly add geometry for our background. Go to the scene view. In the object context, press tab, type geo, press enter twice and rename the node as BG. Dive inside the node. Set the visibility to ghost other objects. Create a grid. Press tab, type grid and press enter twice. Zoom out to check what we are doing. Change the size to 50 by 75 and move the Y position to minus 20. Disable the grid plane and finally reduce the rows and columns to 2. Select the farthest edge in the viewport. Press tab, type poly extrude and press enter. A poly extrude node is placed in the network. Enable the transform extrude front checkbox and move the X local position to 50. Now select the common edge in the viewport. Press tab, type poly bevel and press enter. In the poly bevel node, change the distance to 10 and the divisions to 20 to get a smooth bevel. Add a normal node. 
click on the output port of the polybevel node, drag, press tab, type norm, and enter. Finally, add a null node and rename it as out. Now, let's go to the material context and create a material for the background. Press tab, type principle, and press enter twice. Rename it as BG. Now, drag the material to the background object to assign it. Restore the camera view. Go to the render view and press the render button. Save this reference with a camera icon and compare it with the previous result. In the next video, we are going to review the main parameters you need to adjust to set up the principal shader. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you soon in the next one.